Hey folks, I'm back. <laughs> I know for some of you, it's been a long time since you've seen me perhaps, and you're probably thinking, oh my God, her hair is so short. <laughs> and then others of you have seen me uh, not so long ago, because in the period when I've been away from YouTube um, almost entirely, I actually had a six month chunk of time where I uh, spent every week with a group of 12 folks who were doing my first and perhaps last ever <laughs> Mindful Tarot Mentorship Program, which I have to say was an amazing experience for me. I hope it was for the participants as well. It just, you know, I, I taught at the university for about 25 years, um, and, uh, and I've been teaching tarot for, you know, about three years now, and I've taught mindfulness for a decade or so, and so I have a lot of teaching under my belt, but I would say that the experience of really diving deep into the tarot with a group of dedicated and brilliant practitioners over the course of six months, that was extraordinary. Um, so more about mindful tarot in a moment. Um, COVID has been a thing, has it not? <laughs> I hope uh, wherever you are, you and yours are safe. Um, I hope it's not too scary and overwhelming. I hope that politically and in terms of um, social and racial justice, your world is feeling, um, again, feeling relatively safe. Um, and uh, on this solstice day, longest night of the year, uh, I just want to share with you my sense that um, we're, re we're really moving forward in the universe. Um, my sense of optimism and hope the way in which things that have been ex implicit are becoming explicit and how powerful that is and also painful and scary and tumultuous. But I'm hoping that wherever you are right now, you're feeling loved, you're feeling mm, a sense of um, the sacred, however you define that, you're feeling supported, you're feeling community, and you're feeling that there may be a way forward in your life. So I'm filled with all sorts of joy and hope for 2021. Um, I uh, titled this um, video, which is going to stay pretty brief, Introducing Esther. Um, I announced this on Facebook. I'm not a big Facebook person, but I'm going to become more of one because it is so helpful to stay in touch. Uh, at any rate, um, my, um, my Hebrew name is Esther. I was not only born Jewish, but... My parents, this is a, a painting of my mother, Ruth, from uh, 1929. Uh, so she was born in 26. This is, she's three years old here. Um, my mother, Ruth, my father, Norbert, were both actually born in 1926. My mother was born in, um, in Hamburg, in Germany. My father was born uh, further south in Mannheim. And uh, both of them spent the first six or seven years seven or eight years actually, of their lives in Germany just as the Nazis took over. And both their families, just it happened to be this way that they, both my parents were born in 1926 and both of their families left Germany in 1934. Um, kind of amazing, this is my mother's passport. It's actually my mother and my grandmother, Charlotte Rosa Lotte. Um, this is my mom. My adorable, uh, both my mom and my aunt are dead. My, my aunt Marion, who went by the name Tully, which apparently was um, an idiom for little dumb one. So I grew up calling my aunt, aunt little dumb one, aunt Tully. Um, you, you can <laughs> family dynamics were interesting. Anyway, so I'm the daughter of um, German Jewish refugees. Both families left in 90, 1934. Both made it safely, the immediate families to this country. Both on my mother's side, my father's side, people were lost in the Holocaust. And I grew up Jewish in uh, the Chicago area in the States. And I was bat mitzvah. Um, and I was confirmed as a Jew. And I always kind of didn't fit in as a Jew. Uh, my spiritual life went through a bunch of different iterations until I found my as we say, forever home in Zen Buddhism. Um, I guess I'm what you call, one might call lovingly a Jubu. Um, as a chaplain, I really identify with um, 
my interfaith heart, um, finding the sacred in wherever we are, finding the movement of spirit, of the universe, of love, of life, finding that movement in the midst of the day to day and helping people uh, find their roots in that sacred. So in this year, 2020, a year when um, change has um, uh, become easier to envision because we're grappling with it all the time, even if it's painful, uh, changes also seem to be more and more essential, making changes in our lives uh, in response to uh, the difficulties of the world, in response to uh, the promptings of our hearts. In this year, it's um, felt really important for me to take up um, a desire I've had for a long time, which is to change my name. And I never really knew what name to change my name to. Um, I knew Lisa just seemed like and then this year, I had this flash, remembering how much I love my Hebrew name, Esther, and how much I love um, that the badass story of Queen Esther in the Bible. I mean, I don't really like the fact that she ends up smiting 75,000 people. <laughs> yes, kill your enemies! Ah! What I love about Esther is, you know, it's the one book in the Bible where God's name is not mentioned at all. And yet where you see Esther struggling with her destiny, like, what am, I, what am I here for? What should I do? You know, she passes as a non-Jew, becomes the favored concubine of the king, right? Takes up this name, her original name is Hadassah. Hadassah means Myrtle. So Queen Esther's original name is Myrtle, <laughs> right? She takes up the name Esther when she enters the king's uh, kingdom. And she's passing, right? She's able to pass as a non-Jew in a land in Persia where the Jews are the underclass. And uh, she reaches a point where her uncle, where Mordecai, her uncle, says, you know, you got to help us out here. Our people are being targeted. And Esther decides at that point, she finally is convinced to use her privilege, right? to risk her hide, to risk herself after hiding. The name Esther actually in Hebrew means hidden. Right? Uh, Esther comes forward, uses her persuasive power with the king to act on behalf of her people. There's something about her need to discern her path in a world where we don't get clear answers, where God doesn't necessarily, spirit doesn't necessarily just speak to us. Mordecai at one point says to her when she's like, why should I do this? I, 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 why me? He says, how do you know that you won't come into the kingdom for such a time as this? How do we know? You know, maybe, maybe you're there. And I'm talking here to you, to you watching this, maybe wherever you are right now. You're there to do the work that you see right there, right now. Maybe it is up to you to pick up that work. Maybe this is what you're here to do. There's something in the name Esther that's all about picking up what we think we might be called to do without having the clear, the clear and definite answers. Esther is a figure of discernment of that. Uh, activity of moving forward even though we're confused, even though there's darkness, moving forward, finding our way in the middle of the fog, in the middle of the dark, in the middle of the mist, in the midst of the mist, finding our way forward. And for me, um, embracing my name Esther means embracing that I am the daughter of German Jews. Um, I often don't, uh, people don't necessarily know that I'm Jewish. I don't look Jewish, I pass, right? And that gives me a privilege in a world that still has far too much anti-Semitism. And uh, I know as I pick up the name Esther, I know there's a side of me that's like, ooh, now I'm revealing that I'm Jewish. And I fear that, I feel that fear. And for that reason alone, it seems important to step forward and say, this is me. 
I'm not hiding anymore. So, hi folks. <laughs> I'm Esther. <laughs> you can call me Lisa, you can call me Mindful Tarot, you can call me Hey You. I'll answer to it all. Um, speaking of Mindful Tarot, starting in 2021, and I'll have more videos about this, I am going to be having a monthly Zoom uh, meeting open to any and all, an uh, interactive opportunity to talk about things tarot. Uh, this will be um, lightly guided, so my goal each month will be to introduce material. It'll be Zoom. Uh, I'll use I'll use PowerPoint. Um, so it will be like uh, a, a drop-in, completely open conversation, but also like a class, like a community. Um, to get on the list to uh, be part of that uh, community, uh, just email me at esty, e -S -T -Y, not Etsy, don't confuse me with the online store, esty, e -S -T -Y, at mindfultarot.org. And, uh, and I'll add you to the list and send you the Zoom link and uh, we'll move forward from there. I'm also going to be moving forward with more videos about tarot and how to, um, sort of what I'm calling tarot for grown-ups. Like, how does tarot help us grow up? You know, how does it help us meet our lives in robust, vibrant, full ways? How does tarot help us with the work of discernment, of finding our way forward? So this is both tarot as uh, a tool for mindfulness and awareness and tarot in its divin divination uh, aspects. But it's divination with a difference. This is divination that's about discerning our path forward, about stepping into our fullest identity as... Uh, vibrant humans, human beings in this whirligig world of ours. Um, so I'm back. More videos. I'm sure I'll also have fun unboxing videos. I have a ton of new tarot that I've been just lusting over and loving and diving into. And I'd like to share some of my favorites from uh, acquisitions from the past year and also revisit my uh, wheel of the year uh, spread, um, and then move into 2021. Yeah. Okay, my lovely ones. Um, good to see you. And as always, thank you so much for your practice. Take care.